lot of people ask, where does the Maybrook start? Well, I am in the middle of the town park and this is Randley Pool. And I would say to a certain degree, the Maybrook starts here. So this is a Seven Trent Reservoir. Now this is connected by a network of pipes into Homer Lake and it supplies the bulk of the water to Homer Lake. So over there you have what we call the siphon. This is known as a drawdown siphon, which kind of works like a reverse ballcock. When the water gets higher, it activates the flush and all of the water then travels straight down into Homer Lake. Originally, this was a reservoir for the canal. And one thing that's unique about Randley Pool is the steeply wooded sides. Now, as you can look behind, you've got quite, as you look behind, We've got quite a slope there and that slope sort of continues all the way around the lake which makes it the perfect holding area for a lot of water. Randley Pool is designed to deal with a once in a lifetime flood and the lake is sitting at the current level which it generally does most of the time and it lets a certain amount of water in which is now travelling underground to Homer Lake. The top section, the top set of grids, that is for a once in a lifetime flood if it ever, ever happened. But believe me, that pipe is huge. It's more than capable of uh, dealing with that kind of amount of water. So the lake has been built for a once in a lifetime flood. So a lot of the water here now is on its way to Homer Lake. The siphon has been integrated into a clever viewpoint over Randley Pool. But its actual nickname is the castle because as you can see it's been constructed to look like a castle and as you if you look down we're actually going over the bridge into the actual castle itself but it actually has some amazing views of the lake from here It does look like any other viewpoint really, some nice views, but as you go over you can see those two manhole covers there which take you down into the depths of this and this is actually really really deep under here, so much so it's actually tunnelled pretty much underneath Sturchy Chimney. So let's now go and see where this water has gone to. We know naturally, if there was a once in a lifetime flood, that Randy Pool would be more than capable of dealing with it. But what they've actually done is fitted in another fail safe with another hidden floodplain. Let's go and take a look at it. We've now come to this area here. Now, underneath here is a huge, huge concrete chamber. Now the pipe is now running across here into this chamber. Now the, the pipe that's coming from Ranley Pool is around about just over six foot in diameter but it comes into this central area here. Now also we've got another pipe which is a kind of emergency pipe which runs off to the left hand side and that's around about that's around about I would say seven foot diameter but now it goes down a spillway and then it comes over to the left hand side and then as, as the crow flies now, it actually goes into a tunnel which is around about um, two, two and a half metres in diameter which goes straight across, it tunnels straight underneath the chimney and then it goes straight into the floodplain which we'll show you next. So this is the rough direction the pipe is taking and like I say, it is a huge pipe and you'll see it popping up on the screen in a minute. Um, its diameter is just designed again to hold that once in a lifetime flood and it's heading almost directly underneath the chimney um, to the right of me and we'll go and see in a minute where the floodplain starts. So it's got a long way to go before it gets to Homer Lake but this is just taking you on that journey. So here we are, here's Sturchy Chimney here as you can see and the Big Culver is running right under my feet now and we're going to head across here and head to where it comes out. So we've now coming into another kind of wooded valley now. You can see the sides are starting to slope in a little bit now and what we've got is the start of 
the town park floodplain. It really is just a reserve reservoir. So we can start to see a little bit of the Maybrook starting to appear now. The Maybrook Channel, we're saying the Maybrook because this is where it originated from around here. So we, as you can see, you've got this lovely woodland here and then all of a sudden you can see this, this metalwork here and this is the opening of the big tunnel. Okay, so let's go down and have a look. So now you're going to be able to see all of the water now which is going to be coming from Randley Pool en route to Homer Lake. It's almost like we've opened the pipe up a few metres so you can actually see it. Okay, so here we go. So that's the tunnel, you can see it there. And then there's the water there, going down the slope into Homer Lake. You will not see that water again until it gets to Homer Lake. Well, how does this work? Well, when Randley Pool gets to the state where it can't hold any more water, it opens the sluices automatically and then sends a tsunami of water through this tunnel and then down the spillway to Homer Lake. And that in turn will cause Homer Lake issues and cause it to rise rapidly. Most of the bulk of the water that comes into Homer Lake comes from this tunnel and from the pool. So what happens if we have a once in a lifetime flood where it cannot cope? It will basically overflow through this grid, as you can see. And then it will come down this floodplain here, this channel. It's never ever happened. It's not got to the point where it's able to. And then at the end is another storage area called Fletcher's Pool. Until there's, it's in such time, the water level drops enough so that it can go back into the culvert and then back down to Homer Lake. Can you believe such an engineering feat is in the middle of the town park? So we are now walking along the floodplain this steeply sided storage area. Again, in a way, a reservoir doesn't need to have water in it. It just needs to be a temporary storage solution. So this is the footpath now that will take us into Fletcher's Pool. One of the little known pools in Telford, you can see this little brook here, which is, I'm gonna call the May Brook, is actually carrying water, but it's so overgrown. So let's go out and let's just see if we can see any evidence of the huge big drain that's underneath here, the big pipe. So here's one of the tributaries here going into Fletcher's Pool. You can see the iron oxide that's actually in the water giving it that orangey colour. Um, and that's the thing here, a lot of the area when it's been reclaimed it's full of old um, iron ore, slag and, and just industrial rubbish. So here look you can see the drain cover there. So underneath here we know the drain is running straight the way underneath here. So here we go, we're at Fletcher's Pool now. So this whole area here is a floodplain. So this is a storage reservoir for a once in a lifetime flood. It's just designed in that way and you can see how marshy the ground is. So let's go and take a look. So here's Fletcher's Pool. Well you can see it's actually quite stagnant isn't it? Um, and you can see there's been some really big trees here and this area has just naturally just been flooded. But you can hear the drain now. So here we've got another watercourse coming into Fletcher's Pool here. You can just see it coming down that sort of slipway there. So what we know this does now is it goes down an underground culvert and then underneath the, the bank there and then comes out on Grange Pool. So what Fletcher's Pool does is it feeds Grange Pool. Okay, so 
Fletcher's pool is down there and I've just climbed up that steep bank and then there's another steep bank down there and that is where Grange Pool is so that's where we're going to head to now so here we are this is the other side of the culvert so it's coming out into an open channel now so technically speaking this is where parts of the Maybrook begin um, so I can remember as a kid running through that pipe during orienteering um, a bit crazy really when you think about it so here we go anyway let's go so we're back to the next water course now um, it's, a, it's a little bit blocked so we'll just go round so here we have the brook coming back in from the other side it got a little bit hairy through there um, but we'll follow the brook now until it reaches its next destination If anybody's wondering where we are, we're actually at the bottom of Grange Farm View. So here we go. You can now see the tributary now, it's now running into Grange Pool. So Grange Pool is a pretty much a man-made pool, okay? Um, and the Maybrook did run through it initially um, and it's been done the same as Homer Lake's done really is they've dammed it so Fletcher's pool feeds this so what we know is that this pool here Grange pool is fed by a lot of the tributaries um, around the town park and that feeds the water into this it's a really really nice little pool really it's teeming with wildlife so let's go and have a little look This is a really nice spot here you can see right up the pool there and this pool is in stocked so well with uh, wildlife lots of swans ducks etc um, which is pretty good considering it's only a small pool really the reason why this pool was built is just to manage the water and not have so much water going into the underground network i'm sure if you live in one of those amazing houses over there this is an amazing spot to live so our Maybrook is in the middle of here now. Now let's find out where it goes from here. Believe it or not, our big drains that are running from Randy Pool are actually underneath where we're walking now. Hidden away, deep underneath, making their way to Homer Lake. Like a motorway underground. So as we come round the pool, you can see the planting by the Tower Development Corporation it is amazing. There's lovely willows look. And I am so lucky to have this pool on my doorstep. But let me draw your attention to this beautiful gnarly oak tree here. Look at it. It's nice to be able to just keep little things like that. So we're now still following the course of the underground drain. So there you can see the culvert. It's only a little one there, that little culvert there. Now that's balancing water off this. Now that is now going straight into the drain, into the big tunnel underneath here, which by now the size has increased. So we're looking at a good seven feet diameter tunnel. And that's going straight as the crow flies straight the way across now. 
um, across Sturchie Grange. So the Maybrook's water now is potentially just gone into the culvert um, and now making its way to Homer Lake. So the culvert goes straight the way across this, this area here, which is the bottom of the garden centre. Okay, so we're now at the other end of the culvert now. Now the culvert runs through the housing estate, between the gaps in the back gardens, and then comes across here, straight the way into Homer Lake. So as I said, it's around about a seven foot diameter uh, tube, but there's a little, the Mad Brook itself, the Maybrook pools are fed by this little cup, this little um, outfall here. And this basically is the outfall for all of the housing estate that's behind the Swansmead housing estate. And all of that water um, comes straight the way down and drains off into here and feeds this. So, so from here onwards, we're at the Maybrook pool. So we know the network. We've, we've already looked at that side of things and where it goes. Things got a little bit hairy on that journey, but at least you know where in the park the Madbrook um, originates from and its journey to the pools here.